marketing our community to a broader format so that we're off subject again. I think that the land use and future land use as detailed as Will said, it pretty much is what it is. At this point, we're not seeing enough forward momentum that we're going to have to go in and start re-classing uh, sections of land or buying it up to convert it from residential to to commercial at this point. However, I don't know. I, was there a section in there, Will, that you saw about annexation? Yes. Because um. we do we do have the plan to to bring the lots in from from Boykin, but every every piece of property that we can pull into the community, you know, is additional tax dollars in and additional potential in the future. You know, it's, it's like you look at the highway frontage north on 69. I hate that we missed being able to secure that as part of this, you know, within the city limits when we incorporated, but that doesn't mean it's forever an impossibility. There's also an imp implementation plan also, <coughs> like they had with the housing in here, um, that I think we should review before we adopt this. Um, develop annexation criteria. What page is that on? It's going to be... 4-28. 4-28. Thank you. 110. Or so. 110. Got it. Implementation plan, page 111. You know that in order to annex anything, the people that you're annexing have to approve it. Yeah. It's not like it used to be. Yeah, you, you have to do it's, what? It's really difficult to annex anymore. They have a, a summary at the end of here. Uh, about some of the uh, recent bills, you know, addressing annexation, they pretty much have to ask to be annexed. That's a little figured. Yeah. Unless I didn't, I didn't. I thought there was probably a a little. It wasn't as easy as it used to be. I don't know at, at what point we can claim eminent domain if we surround a property. Um, I do know in our class of city once our population reaches 5,000, we can unilaterally annex. That's going to be a ways off, but, um, you know, for future... I don't know if that's true, David, with the laws they passed lately. I just last year. Yeah, okay. they, they've... Every time they go into legislative session, we they cringe. Make it, make it more difficult for yep. us to survive? Yep. yep. On the um, flood zones, I don't know if everybody's aware... But when the dams broke in 96, when they came back in, they set a blanket uh, floodplain X two feet above the Charmaine, above Charmaine Dam and just put a blanket class on every house um, that's waterfront. Um, so it's not actually... Um, a hard classification so for instance when I refinanced my house I had to go through and have an elevation cert, uh, certificate drawn up actually measuring the actual elevation versus the plane and it removed me from that flood plane X category so um, I don't know if that'll have any you know impact but it is something to be aware about for the community is that some some parcels will be classified as floodplain X even though the home is not in the floodplain. Right. I've heard that. Um, will, do you recommend changes in this section? No. It's, it's pretty, uh, it's, it's on target. I mean, it's, I don't see any changes we need to make to it. Um, the only thing before we adopt it, I'd like to chance to review the um, implement, implementation on the uh, their guidelines to make sure we're. Where are you looking at? I'm looking at probably page 111. 111. Uh, what? 405. Yeah, because. Table 4A. 4A. Okay. Implement, 
David, I found the criteria for establishing uh, dilapidated and uh, need attention stuff. It was uh, page 73, 3.6, detailed housing data criteria. Thank you. 3.6, you said? Yes, sir. Page 73. See, they say in, in this plan, pursue legal counseling assistance to help residents clarify property titles. That's something we want to do. <clears throat> I'm still lost. Four or five? Go back to um, it's page 111. 111. We don't have page number over here. Go to, go to uh, 4.5. Goal number 4.1, the first listing under that. About 427, 428. Under land use study, yeah. Under land? Yep. Oh, the implementation plan? Yes, ma'am. Yep. 428, yep. Okay. I, I believe that I'm, I'm watching as we go between sections and these goals and these sub sub recommendations. I think that a lot of these tie across um, classifications because overlap. when you're talking about the assistance programs from the housing segment it called out and I think John mentioned it depends on having clear title right. so if you don't have clear title to your to your home um, <coughs> then if you get flooded out you may not be able to get any assistance and then we've got a truly dilapidated or destroyed property that could impact you know the general quality uh, level of the community so that might be one of those things where, um, you know, we find somebody that does that, that we can just recommend somebody to go to for advice or more information. It may, be, may not be that we do it. So, so what yeah. about those that are in probate that just will not ever get resolved? Like that cute little yellow A-frame on Charmaine Drive South. Is that what it's in? <clears throat> it's stuck in? Yeah, it's been, I mean, it, it was a really acute cute house now you you can't see it it's mm -hmm. probably got trees growing in it the one down at this end by jackson's house yes. yeah right next door to jackson's house. it's that right was, across straight across the that was jack brock house that was jack brock house was the ant ant but his nephew see, didn't and, want and in this in this plan since last we heard sir, sir the, the, his nephew doesn't want to sell it he doesn't want to do anything with it. the the son that inherited it yeah so huh. there it sits what a shame i know that's right yep and that's Property. As part of the as part of the the issue that we have with these dilapidated houses, right. I mean, but that's a prime property that speaks to the example of why, as a city with ordinances and regulations, is that property been allowed to deteriorate to that condition? Why have they not been fined? Now I know that we're catching up and we got yeah. a mountain to get through but that's one of those things that could be you know it's really it's low-hanging fruit you know when you drive by and you see something like that that makes you question the neighborhood and question whether or not you want to buy here oh yeah um do we fruit for thought and it and the, yeah in this plan here is something that we would adopt adopt an updated zoning ordinance that supports high quality development in ivanhoe yep Exactly. Uh, which, you know, we, we tried to look at the zoning uh, and, and uh, it, it got thrown back. You know, adopt the public works construction manual. I'm assuming everybody's aware back during COVID, our hands were tied in the standpoint of a lot of stuff that we can't do today that we could not do then. Yeah. So we got behind the ball for the last well, for was, two that years. That was not a shot across your bow, no, it, it, no. <laughs> yeah. no, no, I'm just saying, you I'm know, just, I, if everybody, I'm not sure if everybody was aware of that. Well, but sure, we, you know, sure. Uh, My so. question is, if we adopt this, are we adopting all of these information? Mm -hmm. um, do we want to host annual trash collection day, keep records of tons of trash we, collected? We used to do that. Mm -hmm. you know? We haven't done it lately, but we used to do it. So it, when you, you have a community garage sale. when you look at under the title 4.5 <laughs> implementation plan, the implementation plan orga organizes the action items recommended to address each issue identified in the above sections into a timeline for completions and prioritization. I think that it may be 
what you're asking, I think, is along the lines of what I was saying from the get-go. Are we committing to these being firm goals and targets that we have to follow through on? This, to me, kind of speaks. It sounds it's great, out, gray, gray and fuzzy. It's a recommendation. It's a recommendation. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe we just ask um, Grant Works to, at each of the implementation plan, you know, lead-in titles and paragraphs here, these are recommendations that have been set forth and are being considered as part of the future strategy. Well, I don't think we're obligated to do everything that's right. on there. The, the thing about it is uh, when it's in our plan and we go apply for money, it's in our plan. Right. It's not a recommendation that Grandworks came up with. It's in our plan. It becomes our plan. Right. And so, so we go and we say, okay, this. this. No. Huh? no. I would no. say if we choose not to do it, we just we, don't do it. We can't do it all, <laughs> you know. And but when you pull out something that says, "Okay, you know, this is the, it re it's recommended that we do this, and this is why we're asking for a grant because this is part of our plan, not Grant Works plan, our plan. It's our plan. When we adopt yeah. it, it's okay. ours. Mm -hmm. But we all can right. also See change I mean? it. That's good spin. But we can also change <laughs> well, it if we choose to. Yeah. I know about begging for money. Yeah. <laughs> Expert. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's not about grant works recommending. It's about us saying this is what our plan is. But to do that, do we have to go in here and change the, any of the verbiage? Well, that's why I'm asking. That's why I asked David a while ago. Are you suggesting, a, you know, a change in the goals? Because he was talking about goals. Because once we adopt this this becomes our comprehensive plan we can add to it right now we can you know we can make changes right now I suggest changes to once we adopt it can we not make changes add sure, or delete sure oh yes it's, it's, a, it's living a living document, document. It's, so, yeah it's a living okay. document that's yeah. so what, then you know, I don't care I don't mean I don't care <laughs> no but I mean <laughs> you know, the, right now what we're doing is saying this looks good or let's go ahead and add this or take away that or whatever well, but i don't I, think when i when i said i don't care i didn't mean i don't care i don't want to overthink it it's exactly. just this is something that we i think is a good starting point yeah right mm -hmm. yeah well, because we, that, that we can go and grow from here yeah um, i think they have some good suggestions in here yeah, they, absolutely and i really I, i'm i think that you know putting together a section a, a compilation of all the goals that they have for us you know, in a separate yeah. notebook. Like that's, that's a good notes. idea. Yeah. A summary. Yep. Mm -hmm. Without all of the. Then we'll be prepared every time there's a grand opportunity comes up. Let's see what it, what fits in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what are we going to do with this? Huh? What are we going to do with this? Well, where do we go from here? Right. I think and once we get done that, talking about all this. That's kind of like uh, what the, the things they came up with in, you know, that I noticed in the public hearing minutes, uh, you know, suggestions of actions to take. Because based on the goal list we have, we can come up with actions that we want to, that we want to take and, and say, okay, let's work on this and let's find money for it. Because there's a lot of opportunity for, for money out there. We just have to see, you know, what it is that qualifies for it, what, what, there's re more to resources to yeah well what what comes to my mind first is adoption of the document puts us in motion and it gives us a, a, a backbone for submitting grant requests and different things like that having a secondary document that excises the the goals exclusively gives us a condensed document that we can go through in short order five you know five to ten pages yeah and say what what do we want to work on out of this workbook prioritize those and then we can amend that as we go as well and things that you know may not fit our, our particular set of circumstances may move down and we may move other things up but it gives us something that's real easy to flip through a few pages and say as a community what are we working on right. you know yep. what's going on in the background and right. probably develop some some work groups around these different different goals to keep them moving. Okay. Probably Again, the highest that's priority be the dilapidated houses. Start working on those. Yeah, there's that manufactured home where the roof is sitting on the floor. Mm -hmm. There's the school bus that we asked them to move and they Turned rolled it, it over on its side. Mm -hmm. So they moved it. It did get <laughs> moved. I know. Okay. 
<laughs> their story after story. Okay, are we are we good with this section? I like it. I'm, I'm good. Do you yeah, recommend yes. adopting like so. this section? I'm good. Okay. Yes, All right. Let's move on to water <laughs> because Skip really wants wants his turn. Oh, foaming <laughs> at the mouth. <laughs> so. In September of last year, I had uh, Southwest Water Corporation come to my house and test the water. And the water is, is it's good quality water. They don't understand what the brown stuff is. It's probably just dirt and sand that's been sucked in from leaks. Mm -hmm. Looks bad, but. <clears throat> so going through this thing, The approximate date of the original construction of the distribution system is unknown. This says that there are three wells, well number one, two, and four, but I visited well five today that's not in the plan. Yeah, they, Drew, they built a new one or one or two since they did this, started doing this. CB wouldn't know where all that is. So, <clears throat> well number one's on Lancelot. Uh, Capacity is 88 gallons per minute. It says in parenthesis is not in use. Well, number two, Camelot Drive is 28 gallons per minute, not in use. Well, number four is on Durwood Drive, 200 gallons per minute, not in use. I don't mean know. in use. Durwood's in use. I mean, that. I'm I'm just the messenger. Hmm. This is what it says on the in the document. Are you at so, Table Five A? Yes. Ours reads that. Well, number four is in use. Or specifically, it reads that one and two are not in use, but it does not note that well four is not in oh, use. Oh, that's, that's, I didn't say that it was, did I say it was not yeah. in use? Uh -huh. mm. Yeah. Number four? Yeah, we, yes. were, we were just confused. My mistake. Mm. Uh, I stand corrected. <laughs> Thank you. It's, uh, it says that it's in use in where, 200 where, gallons per minute. Where is it? Durwood. Oh, okay. So I know where that one is, and then I went over and looked at well number five today. Where is it? <clears throat> um, Marion and Sir Henry Drive. I thought they built drilled a new one up there on Lancelot. Yeah, that's yeah. one. Uh, they just did that. And yeah. it's not working. That I don't, I don't know. It's that wasn't no. in the plan. I didn't know. Uh, I mean, yeah. So, three hundred gallons per minute. Is that that one? Number four is two hundred gallons per minute. I don't know. No number number five is listed as three hundred gallons per minute. Where is that? That's on uh, page 5-2, just above table 5B. It's a continuation of the 5, 5A table. Oh, okay. I missed it. It's just okay, on the next next page. page down. All right. There it is. <clears throat> what? So the, the our water system is a combination of uh, multiple diameter lines, 2 to 6 inch. There's five pressure tanks, eight ground storage tanks. It says zero fire hydrants, 38 gate valves, and uh, 59 flush valves. <clears throat> I did. I, I, I talked with uh, Roland Pretty, and I, I talked to David Marshall. And I, I called Roland and I asked him, "How do you fight a fire? Mm. What do y'all do to fight a fire?" If a house catches on fire, do you basically just spray water on the adjacent dwellings to save them? And he said, yes, pretty much so, because once once the fire catches, it's, 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 it goes. Um, we have a water connection of two, it's a two inch connection near the fire station that's slow to fill the, the tanks. We've got an engine with everything on it that holds 600 gallons. We have two, two tankers. One of them holds 2,000 gallons. One holds 2,500 gallons. We have three brush trucks uh, with 500-gallon tanks. He said it would be nice if we had a fire hydrant. So I did some, you know, you got to have a four-inch line for that. I did some digging. I, I, I sent an email to Southwest Water asking them if there was some way that we could get a, a high fire hydrant at the front for convenience for our fire department. <laughs> well, so 
our fire department is a, a, an emergency service district, ESD number one. Um, we automatically provide mutual aid to Hillister, Woodville, and Warren. And there's a hydrant, a fire hydrant that's in Hillister that our fire department uses to fill their trucks because it's faster than using the two inch line by the fire department. That's seven point miles away, seven point one miles away, twelve minute one way trip. In Hillister? Mm hmm. It's uh, 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 County Road 4300 and Seneca Road. Uh. So I had conversation with David Marshall about it, and he mentioned that there was a four inch line put at well number five. I drove over there and took a look, and there is. It was put in there specifically for our fire department. So we, are, we have the ability to rapidly f fill the water tanks for our fire trucks if we just use that. It's just the, the road's kind of rough to get there, but David said he could fix that. <clears throat> um, so I, I, did, I did some research on the fire hydrant and found that we, we really already had one. The, uh, the whole premise of this is that, you know, they're, they're asking, they're, they're saying the recommendation is that we should attempt to have our own wells and water system. And, you know, it's just, it's just not going to happen. Uh, we've got an existing water supply comp comp uh, company that uh, provides the service to us. It's it's not a municipal utility district or a mud district. It's a privately held company, but they have to abide by the TECQ rules and regulations. <clears throat> to that point, they are a for-profit company, and that's one of the reasons that we had a rate increase was because they had to put in a $600,000 well somewhere within their system. I don't know where it went, but it caused our our access fee, monthly access fee to go up. So they've got all kinds of numbers in here about <clears throat> the, the uh, capacity of, of the tanks and how many gallons per minute. I, it's, I, I don't know that that's of any interest to anybody. What they're interested in is do I get clean water in my sink at night? Mm. Um, Standards criteria is Texas Commission of Environmental Quality, TECQ, the American Water Works Association, and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency have established regulations and standards for safe treatment, storage, and distribution of potable water to the public. Southwest Water Corporation meets all the criteria, the minimum criteria. I would like to see something personally uh, some filtering added to the front end of their supply lines to I don't know if that would do any good or not if the dirt is getting into the pipes where they break or leak or something along the lines uh, so I've got the uh, the TECQ engineering standards I've got the our, our city of Ivanhoe standards uh, the measurements everything seems to be fine I don't know how to read the read them but <clears throat> I don't know if we really care about how many connections there are and how many gallons go through each connection that seems kind of silly. Uh, according to the TECQ water utility database, the water system serving the city of Ivanhoe has 671 total connections. The water system meets the established minimum standards of water storage capacity with 282 gallons per connection and uh, total storage and 29.2 gallons per connection of elevated storage. The water distribution system, I asked where this information came from, I asked myself. The water system, the pipes in the city of Ivanhoe range in size from 2 inches to 6 inches. 
The system's comprised of approximately 364,797 30, 36, linear feet of distribution lines, and it's a combination of steel and PVC. Any replacement lines are PVC. Underwater, undersized water lines limit volume, yada, yada, yada. I don't think that Southwest Water Corporation has a map of the layout of the water system within Ivanhoe. Perhaps they do with replacement lines, but what's been here is here, and it's... Yeah, we've had breaks, and they don't know where the water line is. <coughs> Shut yeah. off. They don't know where the cutoff valves are. Cutoff yeah. valves are. Um, they go into undersized water lines. There are segments of two inch and smaller diameter pipe in the distribution system. Two inch and smaller diameter lines comprise 64.5% or 235,000 linear feet of the water system. Some are located at the periphery of the system where the intensity of development is low, but a significant number are located within established residential areas. Three and four inch lines compromise an additional 25% or uh, approximately 93,000 linear feet. Because the water system is privately owned and operated, the city of Ivanhoe does not dedicate specific revenues such as a water utility fund or annual repair and maintenance. The other question that it, that it brought to mind is do we have, is there no way that we could have a, a franchise fee such as what we do with local sanitation? It would be totally reflected in the water bill, right? So it would so, just increase people's water So instead water of paying bill. $70 just to have a tap, you'd pay $90 just to have a tap. Well, right now it's 40 something just. Yeah, just to have a just, just to have, just to have just to have access to the water is forty something dollars a month, and so that would increase. Yeah, and do we want to do that? You know that. That's why we haven't looked at it, because our water bills are high anyway. And then if you had additional, mine was only ninety five dollars this month. Well, darn! You didn't take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, that must have been it. your monthly o bath. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> my tomato plant didn't die. Mm. <laughs> so I kind of already went over the fire <laughs> protection considerations. Mm. Every building in the community should be located no more than 500 feet from a fire hydrant. We, requ we rely on pumper trucks. Yeah. And, you know, they do have access to, to the lakes, but they don't like to use the lake water because it gums up the works. Right. All fire hydrants should be installed on water mains no smaller than six inches in diameter. That's not going to happen. Yeah, they don't exist. Uh, this plan will recommend several, several line replacement projects that will replace aging, deteriorating, and undersized lines. I believe that's ongoing with, by Southwest Water Corporation yeah. today, every day. Several years. Mm -hmm. um, August 28th to ECQ records indicate that any minor violations have been resolved. I hope so. It's been several years. Hmm. Now, <clears throat> the uh, residential meter size is five eighths of an inch. That's forty eight sixty nine a month, forty eight dollars sixty nine cents a month, just to have access. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then there's a an escalating monthly access based on the size of the water line that you have uh, up to an eight inch which would be thirty eight hundred and ninety five dollars a month <laughs> shoot why would you want an eight hundred <laughs> or eight inch line with a two inch pipe coming in yeah, yeah. yeah according yeah. to the best information provided to us the city's revenues and expenses related to water and sewer services are non-applicable Right. So that's where I asked the question to myself, if it, would it be prudent to have a some small franchise tax? That would be utilized for? 
roads and security. Oh. I thought maybe you wanted to install fire hydrants. No, no, no. We have we have one already. It's not a hydrant, but it's access for our fire department. Right. <clears throat> Is it possible that we should look at building that out further? What's that? The number of uh, hydrant points, or at least four-inch points, where we could fill the trucks. Is it is it possible that that we should look at building that into the strategy from a, a standpoint of being able to refill faster without having to go all the way to the other? Yeah, yeah. fire hydrants are expensive. Well, and, and to put a just a an outlet with a valve, I mean, I mean it, anybody could come by then and open it up. What do, we, what do we have on that one four inch that we've got? Is it an actual hydrant? No, it's not a fire hydrant. It's just a four inch pipe out of the ground with a 90 degree and a cap on the end of it. Does the fire department use it? Well, it was put there specifically for them. Uh, when I talked to Roland, he didn't mention it. All he mentioned was I think a two-inch line by the fire station and the hydrant in Hillister on Seneca Road. But I think they do use that. It, it's so much faster to fill the trucks. But anyway, That's we're talking. That's why it was put there. was specifically for the fire, filling yeah. the fire truck tanks. Again, we're, we're talking about implementation. You're talking about what? Implementation again. Well, okay. it's all part of the... Well, because... Fire, putting fire hydrants is in here already. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, we already. So, yeah, yeah. so that's what got me going down the the tangent with Roland and David Marshall and how I yeah. found well number five and the. Right. So if if the fire department oh, is CD using a two inch a, line. I didn't get a mic microphone out for you, and you need one. You can use mine. Just develop fire hydrants will lower homeowners insurance rates. Right. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So that's something we can look into with Southwest Water, but like you say, it needs at least if a four-inch line. Yeah. Did you yes. say? Yes. And most of them are two-inch. Um, feeding the house. house. Feeding your house. Yeah. That so four-inch line somewhere. If we could, hours. if we could get fire hydrants and a franchise tax, lower insurance and gain some revenue for the city, that'd be a win mm -hmm. all the way around. Right. Mm -hmm. It's something to look into. I got a question the standpoint. I know when I had the terminal up in Fort Worth, and we had hydrants, obviously, throughout the terminal. Uh, this could have been a, a city deal because we had to send the report to the city, but they had to be annually tested and made sure that all the I's are dotted and T's across, and that information had to be sent to the city. Uh, I'm just wondering if we, I'm not against it, don't get me wrong, but I'm just wondering if we need to allow the funding to have it tested annually, whether it be one or five of them. What, uh, what are you testing for, volume? Uh, volume and, and, uh, and pressure and there's, there was a I think, I think about five or eight different things that we had to. Operability and right. things like that. Yeah. yeah. We've got fire hydrants in the in the plan, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's well, see. Water, blah 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 blah. Major sources of loss: line leakage, line breaks, aging of faulty meters, inaccurate or incomplete record keeping, water theft and unauthorized use, and Monarch Utilities or Southwest Water Corporation performs. System rehabilitation is needed when funding becomes available. <clears throat> the city does not have any interconnections with any other water system. No. So in 1999, the 75th Le Texas legislation passed a, passed a Senate bill this legislation requires that all entities providing public water supplies must develop drought contingency plans. Um, that falls on Southwest Water Corporation's shoulders. We have nothing to do with that. No. But should they implement? Pardon me. So okay, so they have. Okay, but if they implemented water conservation measures, we would be obliged to follow those. 
Well, in the past, we've gotten a notice from the water company saying, uh, try not to water your yard after 3 p.m. or something like that. Okay. I haven't got one recently. You did? No, I haven't. Oh. In the last several years. I think 2011 might have been the last time. <laughs> so, briefly, the lead organization listed on all these goals and objectives is Monarch Utilities. Yes. I assume that Grant Works actually did engage with Monarch, and this is a reflection of what Monarch strategy is? This would be the requirements that Monarch would be obligated by state regulations. CD, are you aware? If you were nodding your head there like you yeah, thought that they... Okay. Okay, great. So this, this actually may have just been disseminated from Monarch. Perfect. Okay. Is your recommendation to uh, to accept this chapter? Skip? Well not I'm not through. Oh. You want me to you want me to be done? You trying to steal his thunder? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was done. Sorry. Thank thank you, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is horrible. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, uh, let's see. I put this as optional. As Ivanhoe grows by the estimated amount described, the city may attempt to develop some water conservation methods on their own. These could be requiring recirculation equipment for all new swimming pool installations, require builders to utilize low demand fixtures and appliances, one gallon flush toilets, implement a conservation water rate structure, implement testing of all meters. Meters are a problem acknowledged by Monarch. They use these uh, RFID or remote reading mm -hmm. techniques and that's according to them Part of the reason why their billing frequency is so erratic. So sometimes you might go two months without getting a bill, and then you'll get a bill for three months. And it it uh, and if you check with their web page, uh, if you log on and check your web page, you'll see that you haven't been billed for those months. And then you know they're not they're not uh, gouging you. They're just back they're just catching up right. and it, it, it it's painful at times for people mm -hmm. especially on fixed income uh, require subdividers and builders to to uh, include low water demand landscaping items in their development plans reduce unauthorized or unaccounted water by five percent per year I can say that uh, in the Meadows place when we moved in there, they had a, an occupancy inspection. And one of those was that, or if you purchased a house, when you, you know, one of the requirements was that you put these fittings on the end of your spigots outside so that it wouldn't siphon water back in. Oh, those in. backflow, mm -hmm. backflow yeah, devices. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but I will not be regulated to use a low flow shower head. <laughs> <laughs> you can't don't you don't have enough water to rinse your hair? That's right. Okay. <laughs> That's a valid argument. <laughs> we may have to put a shower monitor at your house. <laughs> the shower Nazi. I got it. Yeah. No shower for um, you. It's like the Navy showers. <laughs> <laughs> turn the water on, lather up, turn the water off, get out. <laughs> Uh, well replacement, uh, deteriorating isolation valves. Well, most of the stuff it, it falls on Monarch's shoulders. Specific lines, yada yada. Funding for installation of new well sites and generators. Funding to install approximately 7,000 linear feet of six inch water line. That's phase two. Phase three is obtain funding to install approximately 4,500 linear feet of six-inch water line. 
did they not not too long ago replace meters on our come I think of something else no they have replaced meters from time to time right. and they get an exception report every month when they come in uh, and, and they drive by and they pick up the signal to read mm -hmm. your water usage and every month they get an exception report of those meters that did not report and they're supposed to according to them they come out and they put it on a list of meters to replace mm -hmm. whether it happens or not who knows I mean I've gotten I've gone two months and getting gotten three months of bill in one one I received two bills the same day with <laughs> the same date and two different amounts right. <laughs> after I'd made a payment the day before mm. <clears throat> Goals and objectives. I mean, this is this is all for all falls on Monarch. Wastewater supply and distribution system. Okay, we're on to the next chapter. Did, uh, that was water. Then uh, I don't want to interrupt you, Skip. Because well, <laughs> waste wastewater is wastewater and drainage. Yeah, but water. wastewater is the next section in the book. So we, do we, are we in agreement with the water, the sure. section water? Sure. Okay. okay, then we'll go on to wastewater. Thank you. All right, thank you for the interruption. The <laughs> 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 uh, city does not have a centralized sewer system. It's all uh, septic systems controlled by, are, are regulated by TECQ. Standards and criteria, it's all regulated by EPA and Texas Commission on Environmental Quality Control. Gives sewer gradient size. You know, it, it, it doesn't hurt to have this in the plan. We, we may not ever have our own wastewater treatment facility, but it doesn't hurt to have it in as something that might be well as we grow cd says at some point you're going to have to have well, you know yeah. if it gets to the to where we've got that many, you know here here here's the other thing to consider um even even beyond the notion of of growth is the legislation and the tceq guidelines that have um evolved over the years we're getting to the point of constraint where there will very likely be homes out here that when their existing conventional grandfathered system fails will not have an option within TCEQ guidelines to put in a new unit mm -hmm. it'll be pumping it'll be holding and, and pump and you're talking hundreds of dollars every month or two depending on your usage um, so it may get down to a, a, a real serious situation for a lot of folks out here that may have had homes for 30 or 40 years. Well, and already there may be lots too small to accommodate even an aerobic system at this mm -hmm. point. Oh, that's yeah. for sure. Oh, that's, that's true. That's all, that is already a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, as, as, the, as the regulations increase, um, the, the likelihood of, of somebody having a system failure and no longer being able to remedy it legally are increasing rapidly year oh, on yeah. year. Um, so I, I don't know what communities are doing or, or what the discussion may be with TCEQ, but there's got to be some kind of way, because if somebody's, you know, with the way that property values are rising right now, and lakefront lots are incredibly, um, a concern on this point because you lose the front 70 feet of your lot on the lake side mm -hmm. right off the bat that you can't utilize right and that's if you're running a um, um, conventional uh, conventional system it's 50 feet if it's a drip system um, what about aerobic yeah with an aerobic it's all about the the, the dispersal field um, if you're doing a conventional leach field bio panels it's 70 feet if you have a drip system um or spray it's 50. spray may spray may be 70 as well but i know a drip system is 50. 
Um, but you know, the way that property values are increasing, people are going to wind up with a $350,000, $400,000 house, and then all of a sudden one day when their septic system goes bad, what do you do for facilities? And so I that's think that's why I think we leave it in because it you know, gives us opportunity for funding. Yeah. Yes. And it it may be something that we want to go ahead and actively start chasing down the answer to because it's going to be a problem and not very much longer. I, I, I agree with you. Sewage treatment plant is going to be a hellacious price, sir. Yes. A sewage treatment plant. Yes, and it's it's going to require personnel. Yeah. To operate it and but salaries and all kinds of stuff. It, it will also be a revenue salary. opportunity for the city. That's true. Well, if we can get a three hundred million dollars. But it's going to come at the expense of. Well, that's where you go to increase taxes. You should have seen that when I went Not to the water There's development board. Lots of grant funding for um, wastewater treatment. So, yeah. I mean, there were mm -hmm. huge yeah. grants for you know water and wastewater. Suspect, yeah. Yep. Would be, you know, all the, all, the, all, the, all the roads we got, sewer lines. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have we? Yes, ma'am. Do you recommend the? I recommend that we adopt that. Adopt section. the the wastewater section of the comprehensive plan. All right. Now, how about drainage? Storm drainage. The plan recommends that the city attempt to obtain funding for problem drainage mitigation projects, establish a routine program to clean out culverts, grade ditches, regularly maintain drainage facilities, replace selected damaged culverts, replace undersized culverts, regrade associated, associated ditches where necessary, and adopt a street and drainage construction manual ordinance. Um, <laughs> good deal. Drainage in the city of Ivanhoe relies on, relies on system culvert pipes and roadside ditches. We all know that. Yes, sir. Uh, the, pipe, the culverts are corrugated metal, reinforced concrete, and high-density polyethylene. Uh, the existing roadside ditches and culverts serve as the primary roadway drainage infrastructure in the city. In some cases, these ditches do not have adequate capacity to convey runoffs during average rainfall events. The inadequate ditches also do not provide positive drainage for the pavement, resulting in pavement subgrade and service deterioration. We all know this. Yeah, we had that happen at the new low water crossing up here recently. That's right. We have uh, 38,473 feet of roadside ditches. How much? 38,472 feet. Uh, the most significant problem with culvert facilities in Ivanhoe are inadequate sizing in some locations and lack of maintenance. Of the 106 city maintained culverts, 28 are damaged, 13 are mostly blocked. The most common problem encountered with culvert pipes is, blo is blockage from the accumulation of silt, vegetation, and other debris and from damaged ends from vehicular traffic, mostly trucks turning and running over them. I think they understated the, the linear feet of ditches, too. Maybe so. I would think so, because you got ditches on either side of the road, yeah, and you got 46 miles of roads. 38,472 feet. That's so that's only that's seven miles. miles. Well, I guess some of our ditches, it's like on Charmaine South, half, half the street doesn't have ditches. And it's a mile long, so one mile there. Well, you're right. You're right. Feet. Okay, high water. I didn't mean to make you mad. I don't. High water. <laughs> you interrupted me. High water velocities within the ditches, channels, and streams can cause erosion and, under, and undermine the culvert pipes, which can damage or significantly reduce their bearing capacity. We all know that. You know the problem. The problem with culverts, mm -hmm. and we've replaced a lot of them, mm -hmm. and there are going to be a lot more replaced in the future. Uh, existing damage facility says the existing roadside ditches and culverts serve as primary road drainage infrastructure in the city. In some cases, these ditches do not have adequate capacity real that, to convey runoff during average rainfall events. The inadequate ditches, uh, you know, they lead to a serious deterioration of the road. Um, I'm not going to show you pictures of the ditches. Y'all have all seen them. 
uh, it says the city of Houston participates in the National Flood Insurance Program, and a small portion of the city lies in the 100-year floodplain. Uh, <laughs> we already talked about that, so. Um, itemize problems, prioritize problems. City staff and consulting engineers have identified the following areas of concern with regard to the stormwater system. Reconstruction of Lake Ivanhoe Dam and clearing and regrading of the damaged uh, drainage channels to improve conveyance into and out of Lake Ivanhoe. We know about that. Replacement of emergency discharge structure on Lake, Trist Lake Tristan. We know about that. Replace and upsize culverts on Ivanhoe Drive. We already did that. A alleviate flooding along Stonehenge Drive and Lakewood Drive. Flooding is ditches problem. You need to maintain the culverts. You need to maintain ditches and control erosion and sedimentation built up that impedes the function of drainage infrastructure. We all know that because e even with the new road over there on uh, uh, Galahad, you still have water standing inside that road when it rains, which is not supposed to happen. Okay, uh, here's, here's the object goals and objectives for storm drainage system. Mitigate all nuisance ponding areas over the plan planning period, and we're looking at 10 years. Between 22 and, and 32, annually budget to fund the installation of curb and gutter, curbs and gutters throughout the city. <laughs> we got roads for we got curbs and gutters. And that yeah, right. Between 22 and 32, determine if nuisance ponding areas can be addressed as water and sewer improvements are made. We'll, we have to deal with those as they come along. Continue to communicate regularly on the routine maintenance of all covered pipe culverts and roadside ditches. That's something that, well, by 2025, commission and adopt a basic street and drainage construction manual ordinance specifying required width and depth of drainage channels and diameter of culverts for use by current and future city staff and contractors hired to construct improvements. I think pretty much what we do now is what the engineers say, and they're the ones that are telling us you need a 24-inch culvert or a 36-inch or a 6-inch or whatever yes, it may be. Um, improve drainage system between 22 and 32 to alleviate nuisance ponding areas. Educate city public work staff on an increase annual funding to the public works department. They need more money to construct properly sized drainage ditches and culverts. I think a lot of this is, you know, our $11 million and our eight, $8 million is going to address a large... Well, it's all about, both of them are about drainage. Yeah, mm -hmm. a large portion of that. Uh, let's see. Well, this, this is the same thing. It, it's reconstruct Ivanhoe Lake and Duke Tristan, Duke Camelot. We all know that's got to be done. Um, goals and objectives. The whole the whole thing they're saying here is we got to deal with drainage and ditches so the water will flow in the lake so that they'll drain. One part in here said the large majority of the drainage goes into Lake Charmaine, which we know it does because it circles around. But also Camelot gets a lot, so does Tristan. So drainage is we have a place for it to go. We just a lot of it doesn't get there because the drainage system, the ditches are not adequate. The culverts are too small, or it gets there the wrong way. Or it gets there, mm -hmm. the wrong, yeah. Well, and we've been and been <clears throat> dealing with that. And I think, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the storm right. drainage system study is, is accurate. Um, just some of it has already been done, and and the and some of it's fixing to be done, as far as next year, or year after on, on the uh, eleven and a half million for. Tristan, Camelot, and, and Ivanhoe. So my recommendation, we go ahead and adopt it. Looks good to me. Tommy, did you encounter anything that had to do with right-of-way easements to get some of this moved off the right-of-way? Yeah, there's some that have been moved off the right-of-way. Yeah, there's some that have been moved off the right-of-way. Yeah, there's some that have been moved off the right-of-way. Yeah, there's some that have been moved off the right-of-way. Yeah, there's some that have been moved off the right-of-way. Yeah, there's some that have been moved off the right-of-way. Yeah, there's some that have been moved off the right-of-way. Yeah, there's some that have been moved off the right-of-way. Yeah, there's some that have been moved off the right-of-way. Yeah, there's some that have been moved off the right-of-way. Yeah, there's some that have been moved off the right-of-way. Yeah, there's some that have been moved off the right of way yeah there's some that have been moved off the right of way well, first, first, I'd, I'd like to, to sure. thank you for doing that part for me. Yeah, because he, it was actually assigned to him. Oh, well. <laughs> but you did a fine and, job, and Tommy. Yeah. He thought well, you was tired. 
<laughs> you gave you a break. <laughs> you did a fine job, Tommy. Thank you. And, I didn't and, have anything else to do while I was at the convention, so I went ahead and read it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're, welcome. you're welcome. <laughs> Besides, it sounds like you've already had two or three. I mean, good. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, this, this okay. Good job. We're at five minutes to six. We have a six o'clock meeting. We said that we were going to keep this to two hours. We've gotten uh, Let's, through. Let's uh, halt. I think we're at stopping point, so we can have a little bit of a break before we start another yeah. meeting. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay, we, we reconvene in five, four, three, two, two one. Yeah. Time to reconvene. Oh, hey, Kathy, come here. Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'm Miss Debbie. I didn't think you needed to sit here for two hours. Well, we missed you. you we missed wondered where fun. you were. No, I, I had fun with John this morning. <laughs> so, so see, what, what are you going to do? I think uh, code enforcement, John, you need about maybe a staff of four more. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tell me about it. I was looking at all this stuff to read about all this. It's like the housing and everything else. We don't have enough personnel. It's like the, the drainage and, and the streets. We need four more people. And we, need a, we need a vehicle. Y'all need a vehicle. Yeah. You know, it comes to go to I thought we were going to buy a vehicle. What happened well, to that truck? Well, originally it talked about, you know, one of those three vehicles. Yeah. Or something, you know. But, oh, I know. The mayor took it, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I... Other side. I wonder if she ever got that rear end. There was something in the rear end. I don't know if it was a shock or a strut or something. But I mean, you hit the something. City, the city van? No, the one she's driving, yeah. Uh, yeah. It just lets out a big old clean. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. Hmm. I would say you could use the Hummer, but I see it being used all the time to pull around there. Right. They don't use the big truck to pull the big trailer with. They use the Hummer, which maybe is a good thing. Do you hear a big old clunk that just come out of the back? Do you hear a bump or something? You don't? Randy did that on his property. The last time I drove it, you know. Well, what are you doing? I'm going down up and down these roads is what I'm doing. I think, I was wondering, I think, did you tell the city that or did the last time Jack and I went out, I took it six feet. Linear, yeah, from the. Find out what it is. <laughs> I think we were looking at buying a truck. Something <laughs> happened and fell through. So I stood into that. The truck was a little bit. Maybe we were in trouble there. They took out some cars. Carl, the Jeep. Boom, straight to it. And it'd be nice if somebody looked at it. Post here, I use post here. Sometimes it's navigation. Do you see the wave runner? Yeah. Well, I, my, no, I haven't gone by to see it yet. Who's is it? It's uh, Robert Tobin. Down there. Uh, you know what you're saying? That, that little divot is. Somewhere between. We have a little map. On the Shallon Church.